Hey everyone, welcome back to Susan's Sunday Spotlight. This is week number four. I always do that. It's week number four. It's week number four, so it's appropriate that we are going to be playing a game that's pretty common. Uh, I think a lot of teachers use this game, but I'm just going to share kind of my take on it and a couple of the little tricks and tips that I use. And this game is called Four Corners. Let's go. So Four Corners is a very easy game that I use all throughout the year. I use this at the beginning of the year, I use it in math, I use it in phonics, I use it in reading. So I want to kind of share just a few of the ways that I use it. So at the beginning of the year I like to use this to kind of get students talking and to know each other. So all you're going to do is, as the game suggests, there are four different corners that you're going to set up in your classroom. And students, based on the question that you ask them or the flashcard that you give them or however you plan on doing this, will think about their answer and they will go to one of the four corners. So at the beginning of the year, sometimes I've simply put up um, how many, my question would be, how many siblings do you have? And I would have zero, I'm an only child, one, two, three, or more. Students would think about it for a second, then they would stand up, go to their spot, and wait for a second. Once they get to their corner, my next directions might be to have them chat about those siblings, chat about who lives at home with them, just to kind of, again, get to know each other. Sometimes I'll also like to do what kindergarten teacher did you have? So I will put down the different kinder teachers, and of course I'll always leave one that says um, none of the above, so we can kind of see where students were last year and how they're coming into the classroom this year to, again, kind of have some familiarity and get to know each other. So when going into subject areas, um, I like to play this game, like I said, a lot, and I usually do it with flashcards at this point. So just a quick tip that I have, and I do this all the time for pretty much everything, but all year long I always keep up on my desktop um, a blank PowerPoint that already has flashcard, like a flashcard template. So I'll insert a picture here so you can see what I'm talking about. And I just basically call it on my desktop, I call it working flashcards, because I go in and type whatever I need when throughout the year. I have worked in school before where you can't have anything saved on your desktop, it gets wiped every night, so I just keep it on a thumb drive. But this helps me tremendously, especially with games like Four Corners. Since it's a whole group game, um, you don't need to make that many copies of anything. You can just make, I usually make 10 per page and you're only printing out like two or three pages. Cut the boxes out, pass them out. It's very easy to prep during your prep period or during the morning if you know that's what you want to do. So for something like math, I usually will put, maybe I'll have four different numbers around the classroom. So I'll have seven, eight, nine, and ten. And students, for that, I would, you know, type up my own little flashcards because I don't have flashcards that match those exact sums. So when I do this, I'm usually having everyone sit on the mat or they're at their desks first, and then I first pass out the cards while they go ahead and look at the four corners that they're using, and they have to silently decide where they're going first, and then I usually say, one, two, three, go. Students stand up, and they walk to their corner. Students get used to this game pretty quickly, but it's a really easy warm-up. Like I said, if you're doing addition, you just type out those addition equations you want them to work on. They quickly do it in their head or on their fingers, however, however works for them, and then they go ahead and walk to that corner. Then you can quickly check, make sure everybody's right, collect the cards, shuffle, and redo it again. Um, as time goes on, I definitely don't like to just keep it with addition. I will mix in addition and subtraction so they're doing both and still figuring out which corner they're going to. So phonics is also really simple. I like to do um, short A, I, O, and U, and on this one I'll have little picture cards. And again, right on your PowerPoint you can just type in little pictures, paste them in there, and print it out. Um, and also once you're printing these out, you can just keep them in baggies so you have them for future use. But basically students will look at their card, determine where they need to go, and head to that corner. Um, as the year goes on, and like I said, they get more comfortable with this game, I like to turn it into a timed activity. Um, where, so instead of going from like an individual kind of activity, it turns into a team game and a whole group game. So again, I'll have students sit quietly, I'll have them set the timer for about a minute, and then I have them look at their card. When I start the timer, they silently stand up and walk to the corner that they think they belong to. Now, when they get to their corner, when we're doing a timed one, everyone has to check the other people in the group to make sure everyone's in the right area before the timer is up. So we do this over and over and see how fast we can get into our corner. I like to do this especially for the addition and subtraction facts because I want them to get them faster and faster as the year goes on. Um, another thing I like to do to make it a little more difficult is towards the end of the year I like to add a question mark corner. 
and so some of the cards that you pass out might not fit into any of the categories. It just adds a little element of wondering where they need to go and heading over to that corner and then figuring out kind of what that corner can be called. So instead of it just being like, oh, none of these fit, that corner does actually have a name and the students that are in that corner have to figure out what that corner should be called. So yeah, again, this was a very simple one that I wanted to share with you because it's something that is very versatile and can be used all the time. Is it versatile? Versatile? Versatile. I always say versatile. I'm not sure if that's right. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and make sure you go ahead and click subscribe and also click the bell so that you are notified every single week of my brand new videos. If you try any of these games in your classroom and you want to go ahead and share them either on Instagram or on Facebook, whatever, feel free to tag me in them. My Instagram is at Susan Jones Teaching. I'd love to see them and I would love to kind of hear how you use these games in your classroom and any adaptations you use and leave a comment below and let me know how it's going. Thanks guys. Bye. Let's get it started in hell. Let's get it started in hell. Eh, eh. Don't sing. <laughs> Let's go.